Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about fetching data with React. So you should have installed Axios by now, and you can check that by going over to your package.json file, and you'll see Axios in here. So let's start with actually fetching the data. And I'm going to use JSON placeholder for that, which is a free uh, fake API for testing and prototyping. And if I scroll down here, you will see that there's a set of six common resources. So when I click right here in posts, you will see it will actually already fetch those posts inside my browser, right? This is an array of objects with 100 posts in here. So if we want to fetch that data in React, we can make use of the use effect hook. Oops, use effect. And you will see it will import it from React. And then we pass in an arrow function. And the next thing we're going to add as a second parameter, you can see it right here as well, is a dependency list. And I will just make an empty uh, list right here, which you can initialize by using the square brackets. And I will show you uh, in the last part of the video why I do this. So I could say const fetch posts is and we are going to have an arrow function right here. And we are essentially creating a new variable. We say response is and then we use axios. You will see it will import axios as well. And you don't for get request, you don't necessarily have to do dot get uh, because it will do that by default. But I think it's pretty clear that we're right now making a get request with Axios. And I can simply copy this URL. There we go. Pass it in here. And then I could lock the response. So we're going to check in the console was actually the response. And then we, of course, have to call that function down here in the use effect. So now when I go back to my app, head over to my console and save the file, you will see right here, we get a promise, which is pending. But you will see that the state now is fulfilled. And that's because I have a pretty quick internet connection. And uh, if I click right here on object, you will see the response contains a property data and in there we have the array with all the objects so we could access um, those objects but saying response that data but now if I save the file and I'll just refresh it right here you will see it will say undefined and the problem is is that we directly console lock response to data but of course this data request takes a while so that's why we have to bring an async await so i could say async and await right here so what this will say is that we want to wait before the response has actually been returned and then want to log it Right, so then we want to lock the response that data and we cannot use the await without the async keyword. So that's why I put it right here. And now if I save it, you will see, boom, there we go. We got our array of objects. So let's show all these posts on the screen. So we could store the data uh, making use of a use state hook. So we can say data that data and we say use state and initially it will be no right because we do not have any data however um, instead of console logging right here we could say set data to response that data now if I go into my react dev tools you will see right here now in the state, it will um, collect 
all these objects. So now we could say right here, we could say we could map over that data because it's an array. So we could say data.map, everything is a post, and we want to return. And well, let's take a look what's in here. So we have a user ID, an ID, a title, and a body. So I could destructure these properties. So this will take it from our post. And then we want to grab the ID, the title, and body. And then we can return, because that's what's actually going to be displayed. For example, an article tag. And then we give it, uh, well, let's say the title. And we can put the ID in here as well. And the body. So now once I go back and save it, it will display all the posts, all 100. Because if I scroll all the way down, you'll see we got 100 posts. However, you already see that we got a warning in our React DevTools. And if I open this up, it will say each child in a list should have a unique key prop. And we can do that by simply going over right here and saying key is equal to and it's very common for a server to respond with an id for every object so it's always a good idea to use that id because it's most of the time unique now when i save it and also refresh this page you will see that we got another error and it will say cannot read property map of null because what's happening right now it immediately tries to map over data however initially we set it to null and null is not an array so we can also not map over it so in order to make this work we could say only if data is true so if it's an array then do the data.map otherwise don't do it so now i save it and there we go and you will see also in our react dev tools we don't have the error anymore However, you might ask yourself, like, why do we need to pass that key prop? And for this specific example, it's not necessarily a problem. But let's say you want to remove um, certain posts or objects, in this case, from the data array. You can get yourself in some trouble. And I've experienced it myself because what's happening, for example, let's say we have a delete button right here and we click it. The first time it goes right, but then you click it and then some other property disappears, right? So the uh, data is not in sync anymore with React. And the reason for that is that React is not able to identify which is actually the first post and the second and so on. But if you pass that key prop, React knows exactly what post you're targeting if you, for example, want to remove it. So the next thing is loading states. So now if I refresh the application, you will see the data loads pretty fast. But let's say we have a pretty slow internet connection and I can simulate it by throttling my connection, my network to slow 3G. Now if I refresh the page, you will see it goes to blank. Boom, there we go. And only now it shows the data. And that's of course not very good user experience. So what we could do, we could add a loading state. And we could actually, let's copy this. And we could change this to loading, set loading. And by default, it will be false. However, if we are going to fetch the posts, we will immediately set the loading state to true. So the loading state will be set to true. It is then going to do the data fetch. And once it's done with that, so you could say once the data has been set, we can again set the loading state to false. So here I could say set loading to false. 
And now here, I could say, if loading is true, then show. And we could do all kinds of things here. We could add loading spinners, but for now, we'll just keep it simple and render the text loading. And now you will see when I save the app and refresh this as well. You will see it says loading, but once it has the data, it disappears. But we got another problem because let's say, um, and I of course don't have control over this server, but let's say the server is offline or it just doesn't give a response for certain reasons. In that case, we have a problem because it will not show any data and our data fetch will actually give back an error. And we can simulate that by, for example, putting a random uh, amount of numbers here, because this, of course, does not exist. So now when I save it, and I will put my network back to no throttling, do a refresh, you will see that loading state stays there. And when I go to my network tab, you will see that our fetch actually didn't work. The server returned with a 404, which stands for not found. And you can also see that, by the way, in your console. Here it also says that the request filled with a status code of 404. So in order to prevent this from happening, we can add an error state. So let's copy this and change it to error. And now we can put our logic in what's so called a try catch block. And we can actually put this code right here. So what it will do now, it will try to execute this code. And whenever an error occurs, it will be passed on to the catch block and we can do something with it. We could, for example, console log the error. So now when I save it, you will see, there we go. We got a console lock on line 21 right here. And it says request filled with status code 404. So here we could, for example, say set error to true. And of course we could also set the error state then back to false. Should it happen that our request um, succeeds anyway? So we can say set error to false right here. So now when I save it, I can go down here and I could say if an error occurs, could return something like, oops, could not fetch posts. Please try again later. So now when I save it, you will see that the loading is still set to true. So we also have to set it to false right here. Shoot it error out. So you can set loading to false. There we go. And now you will see if we make an unsuccessful request, it will just display um, the, uh, the error message. So to give you an example, I will again throttle my network or my internet speed and now you will see it will first jump through that loading state takes a while so we have loading and then we get the error message so i'll just put it back to normal again so it works so now you might wonder, okay, but what's up with that use effect hook? What is it actually doing? And use effect runs whenever your component renders. However, if you would not pass this empty dependency array, it would run over and over again, because for every set state, it will render again. And I can show you this, because if I save it without the dependency array, like this, I put this back to no throttling you will see it keeps fetching those posts 
and we can simply prevent that by passing that empty dependency array and the reason why this works is that this will kind of like mean only do this on the very initial mount but not afterwards and later in the course we will also learn about passing um, certain things in that dependency array so just that use effect then runs conditionally but for now this is all you should know so this might have been a little difficult video um, if you don't completely get the hang of it you know watch it for a second time uh, code along with it see if you can maybe fetch some other data because they have a lot of other resources you can fetch but if you get the hang of it then I'd like to see you in the next video where we are going to talk about actually setting data on a server. So I see you there.